It was a promising start for the Cincinnati Bengals in Kansas City before recurring and familiar problems reared their head and effectively ended the Bengals season. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. I'm Jake Lisko. He's James Rapine. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network here on Lockdown Bengals. And as the Bengals' playoff hopes for this season with a backup quarterback have unfortunately come to an end, or maybe you were hoping they would come to an end, the, the season for the Cincinnati Bengals effectively over. We're still covering the team every day here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. So if you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button or follow wherever you get your podcasts, and you'll find us on YouTube as well. Today's episode of Lockdown Bengals sponsored by Prize Picks, a fun way to stay in the action with daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown NFL and use promo code lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. And James, a real tale of two halves to, to a large degree here for the Cincinnati Bengals, getting out to a, an early lead and mm-hmm. then explosive plays, run defense, inability to sustain offense. Things just kind of blew up on him in the second half. It's sort of how I felt like the game would go, where this Bengals team would come out and play desperate, play well. And on offense, they certainly played well. I mean, you score on your first three possessions, and it's like, okay. But at the same time, this defense, and I think that's sort of where we should start, the defense stunk. And yeah, the bend don't break thing sounds good. But when you give up six field goals and you give up, I I still think they're giving up explosive plays, even though the game is over. I'm not certain on that, but it just felt like the chiefs, they could turn little screens into big plays. Isaiah Pacheco was unstoppable. Why? Because the Bengals got their tails kicked in the trenches, just kicked, booted, whatever you want to say. And I know a lot of people have focused on the secondary and the safeties and the corners and whether it's Cheeto or Dax or insert whoever. But today, the the Isaiah Pacheco train, that's what was the game changer, I think. I mean, the fact that the Chiefs only ran the ball with Pacheco five times in the first half, he had 88 rushing yards in the first half on five carries. It's just, it it was insane. And, And so that's where I think this game was lost. The offense kind of hid and masked the a, a bad defense for the first half. But when they came back down to earth, and it wasn't because of turnovers or anything like that, it was just they struggled to move the ball against a good defense. This Bengals defense didn't have enough answers and struggled in between the 20s and couldn't stop the explosives. And it was basically a 1,000 cuts, but it was 25 cuts, and it was enough for the Chiefs to clinch the, the AFC West and eliminate the Bengals from playoff contention. Yeah, we're going to disagree here a little bit. Uh, I, I'm not saying that I'm excusing the defense in any way, shape, or form. They were not good enough. They gave up all those field goals. They gave up a ton of yards. But they also got the Bengals seven points with Trey Hendrickson with a clean strip sack of Patrick Mahomes in the first half. One of the reasons the Bengals got out to the lead they did. They got enough stops to keep this a one-score game when the they offense— They got two stops. Two stops the entire game. A strip sack. Sure. In but a punt. Two you stops. mentioned Ben don't break, and while you would rather not do that, they did not give up touchdowns after 25 the first points has been too much, though. It was it a one score been. game the entire game. The Bengals offense did nothing after they scored a touchdown on the short field gifted to them by the defense. Now, again, to be clear, I am not excusing the defense, but the offense also went dormant and that is because the run game was terrible they ran the ball until the last drive of the game at least the last time i checked 22 times at one point early down rushes to 22 early down passes they stuck with the run game in this Mm -hmm. contest it was the most early or most first half runs i think that was a jay morrison stat in in zach taylor's tenure in cincinnati and they just simply weren't good running the ball at least with their running backs, Jake Browning, a different story with his first half scrambling when the Chiefs were insisting on playing 
man, and and to Browning's credit and to this coaching staff's credit, they found answers in the first half to man. But then Steve Spagnuolo adjusted. And in the second half, outside of that one drive where they don't make it on fourth down, and obviously the game turns there in a big way, the offense was was pretty horrible. Uh, I know they started well, but after that, they couldn't get things going. And in the second half, it felt like Jake Browning couldn't see anybody open or was seeing ghosts. And some of that is Jake Browning being a backup quarterback for sure. But a lot of that is also that I think they got out coached in the second half significantly when the offense was on the field and the defense, they got gashed. Don't get me wrong. To me, that felt like everybody losing on verticals. The Bengals couldn't defend a vertical pass for their life. That that's been a problem all season, whether it's a slot fade, whether it's just a go ball. We've talked about that before. We talked about the running game. And those were both issues. That's another thing I'm disagreeing with a little bit with you there, by the way, James. I think the the verticals were a huge issue for them. And the fact that the Chiefs were able to generate per Rasheed explosive. Rice one. Rasheed Rice had one. What else? Justin Watson? Yeah. Oh, those so are huge two. plays. Two. Those are huge plays. No, I'm not saying they're not huge plays. I think a couple of things. One, I agree with you on the coaching. Spagnolo completely adjusted. And the Bengals had no mm-hmm. counter. And I don't know what the plan was, but maybe find a way to try to get Jamar Chase more involved with T. Higgins dealing with the hamstring, even though he was out there. And shout out to T for going back out there, but probably far less than 100%. So now you have mm-hmm. two weapons that are less than 100% playing. And d- defensively, I get it. But when you're getting gashed like that, it's it was Cam Taylor Brett one on one with Rasheed Rice. And I get it. R- Rasheed just runs right by him. You can't let that happen, but that's that's what happens when you get crushed on the ground. And they did, especially in the first half. Well, and and that's the problem, right? Is that when they dedicated more resources to stopping the run, they were getting gashed in the passing game. When they dedicated more resources to stopping the pass, when they went light boxes, they were getting gashed in the running game. So it was like no answers, right? And and they found the the red zone. And we talked about it. We talked about that exact scenario before Mm -hmm. the game. Right. That, that that's what the Chiefs should do. So, and, and when the Chiefs went away from the run at one point, they got punished for it. The Bengals got a quick three and out coming out of the half because the, the Chiefs tried to throw the ball. And there were a couple of times where the Chiefs tried to throw the ball before they started finding those explosives and softening things up. And, and they got out to a lead late in the game where the Chiefs offense looked pretty bad at times too, despite how things finished and, and they found answers. But where I was going with the offense was I thought that Spagnolo did a great job of taking away what the Bengals wanted to do in the passing game. And and Zach Taylor, Brian Callahan, Joe Burrow, whoever was on the headset, Dan Pitcher, Jake Browning couldn't find the right answers. And this is mostly obviously a uh, head coach, play caller, Zach Taylor, Brian Callahan issue most likely, but it felt like whether either Jake Browning wasn't seeing it or guys were just covered. Every time they cut to the all 22, Tony Romo saying, there's no for him to go with the ball. He's not always right, of course. There there are at times places he could have thrown the ball if he was on time, but he wasn't seeing it. They couldn't, as Zach Taylor said, get into a rhythm in the second half, and that is incumbent, I think, on the coaching staff in a big way to me. So that's where my criticism is. Defense, big issue for sure, but to me, offense, you you can't just do nothing after getting out to 17-7 lead and then nothing the rest of the game. Yeah, No doubt. No, you can't. can't you, you you can't do nothing. Let's uh, let's talk about the one time coming up that the offense did get the ball inside the 10 in the second half. But no, I agree with you. I wasn't trying to excuse the offense. But we're going to spend a lot of time this offseason talking about the defensive trenches. Oh yeah. I I have a feeling. I because this Chiefs team it's not like they run the ball all the time. They want to pass the ball with Patrick Mahomes desperately. Yeah. I, I also will say this Marquez Valdez Scantling, if he had hands like Jake Lisko, he probably jogs into the end zone in the first half and instead drops one. That, they they uh, had on several they had several yes. drops that bailed out, could have been more explosive. They probably dropped two touchdowns on yeah. on so and a third down conversion. Travis Kelsey had a drop anyway. Which uh anyways, I'm not gonna talk about fantasy football, but <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about uh, a fourth down, fourth and one, the decision to go for it after the, the Chiefs decided to stick to field goals throughout the second half. So let's do that and uh, the play that uh, didn't go anywhere. We'll do it coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. The Bengals might have been 
eliminated from playoff contention, but that does not mean that you shouldn't get to prize picks. And they're the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It may be like me, you've been eliminated in some of your season long leagues. Well, prize picks continues. And the fun part about prize picks is all you do is you pick more than or less than on their projections. You don't have to go up against the sharks against the pros against thousands of other people. It's just you versus the projections and you can combine different things. So maybe next week you want to go with Jake Browning throwing for more than the number of passing yards that he has and you want to, uh, or that he's projected to have. And you want to combine that with LeBron James less than on the number of points he's projected them. You, you can do that. It's really cool with prize picks. So you can mix and match sports. You can mix and match different teams, different players. You can pick a receiver and a quarterback. You pick two to five and you can earn up to 25 times your money right now with prize picks. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL with code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. The Bengals made a big decision on a fourth down in this game, James. Not sure if you caught that part of the game. Uh, it's kind of sneaky, sneaky moment. Not not huge or anything. The Bengals, after getting a three and out, go 11 plays, 74 yards to what? The five yard line, was it? Six, Six. yard line? Six. And that's after T. Higgins re-enters the game, draws a big DPI, clear as day, saves a touchdown for the Chiefs. Honestly, smart penalty in retrospect but an opportunity that the Bengals miss out on either a field goal to take a seven point lead, which, you know, you look at the results of the rest of the game, obviously there's a butterfly effect. The Bengals still lose 25 to 20, if that's all the points they score. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the various go for it math simulators out there, whatever you want to call them all said the Bengals should go for it. The, the chance of them converting a one yard play, estimated to be high enough and and the risk for getting a touchdown there to get to a 24 to 13 lead, which also wouldn't have been enough turns out was enough for the math to say, go for it. But boy, the look they had Kansas city showing a, a zero, we're going to send 10 guys and, and sell out on the run kind of begged for a timeout and the Bengals didn't do that. No, they, they didn't call a timeout. And honestly, Let's just examine the entire sequence. First off, I get going for it. I would have gone for it. They That was their last scoring opportunity, realistically. Getting a touchdown there was pretty important, given how the defense was playing. So don't blame Zach one iota for going for it, and I would have. And I would have probably been critical of him had they lost 25-20, and he not went for it there. So get going for it. But fourth and one, you're right, either a timeout or – Good Lord, please throw it because there's no way Joe Mixon has a chance and he had no chance, gets tackled for a three-yard loss. So, yes, either check to something else or go, uh, call a timeout or something could, because you cannot run that play. But on third down, it was, let me make sure here, third and three. Yep. Travion from Williams. The, from the eight. And it's Travion Williams. Tendency breaker, baby. What the hell are you, what are you doing? And I'm not trying to be mean to Travion. It has nothing to do with Travion, the, the person or the running back. They haven't given him the ball all year. Joe Mixon earlier this season was playing like 78% of the offensive snaps because they did not trust Travion Williams to touch the football. And Chase Brown, who I actually thought had some decent runs, even though there wasn't much there on his three attempts. It, it, that's not who you give it to. I just don't understand why you would hand the ball off to Travion Williams, third and three, right there, up 17 to, what was it, 17-13 at that point? Yeah, 17 yes. to 13. Mm -hmm. And you have a chance to go up two scores. Like, good God. I I, I have no idea what they were thinking. I really don't. We, I have no idea. I'll, I'll tell you what they're probably thinking. Not that I necessarily agree with this, but he, here's what I believe the thought process Pass was. blocking running back. Oh. It's a tendency breaker, like I said, sarcastically, Oof. when you stop talking for a second there. You, you go out there right. with your personnel to pass the ball, but you don't put your sample out there, so you can still threaten to run the ball. So you're still two-dimensional, and uh, they, you're right. They, they haven't handed the ball to Travion in that spot all year. And uh, Travion just didn't didn't quite get enough. They, they ran the ball really poorly in this game. They, I think, stuck to the run to their detriment uh, a, a little bit. 
not maybe as a hot take, but they got themselves into a ton of third downs because they were insisting consistently on running the ball. And that's what happened there as well. Uh, but even on that drive, they had a, a one yard run on a first down. They have an incomplete pass on, on the second down. And then you're in third and nine. Then they go run, 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 run four straight plays. And, and they can't get the yards. This is not a good running football team. Uh, results against teams that like to shoot the gaps, notwithstanding, and, and we did see that a few times, the Gus Bradley defense. Uh, we, we saw it against the 49ers as well, those similar styles of defenses, but that's not what they got in this game. I thought that they put themselves in some very difficult positions because of their insistence to run the ball on early downs. That included a couple of second and long runs in this game that set up third and longs. They were able to overcome it, so maybe a lot of you didn't notice that because they were eight for their first 10 third downs, which includes several third and longs, but that regressed in the second half, and, and they were unable to sustain that. I tweeted at halftime, that is a hard way to live. Eight for their first 10, zero for their last six third downs. Talk about yep. regression. And yeah. eight for 16 in third yep. down efficiency. Yeah, and they started four for five. And the, the one that they didn't get four for five was the, they had to settle for a field goal, which mm -hmm. I love the opening drive, by the way, like the way they were able to eat up clock and it, move the ball down the field. I was like, Oh, all right. All right. J Jake Browning's legs, you know, shake and Jake. All right. All right. He was awesome to start the game, by the way, we, we can talk about that to finish the show later, but man, he was great to start the game. Dialed in, dialed in. And it's just, it's really hard to be, great all game long in that position in that stadium in those moments it, in it third just, downs it, constantly yes behind the chains it, late in the game man yep oh yeah i mean that final drive pin back ears for the that kansas city d line that's not where you want to be against steve spagnola resilient fourth and 18 yeah. and jake browning finds boyd and then you look up and it's third and 27 after back-to-back -back sacks so and you bad. have Chris Jones screaming at you as you try to hit Trent and Irwin and Irwin was open, but man, that's, that's just a, it's a tough situation. And that's the stuff you want to avoid. I thought overall, I don't know about you, but like from a pass blocking standpoint, I thought the offensive line was pretty solid, especially early. I thought they held up and uh, it's not like we were hearing Chris Jones's name or George Karloff. This is name until that final drive. Yeah. And it, Suddenly, those guys were just game wreckers. And when you're down eight with two minutes to go and the whole world knows you have to pass it, well, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I thought the offensive line actually played pretty well until that last, maybe the last couple of drives. Sure. There were some problems. I mean, we also saw one of the worst intentional grounding calls of all time. Just an objectively Awful. incorrect call. That, that they it's came wild back that everybody they, agreed. Even, even the, uh, sorry, just even the, uh, the broadcasting uh, official. That works for CBS. I forget his name, but the fact that he agreed, Gene, they rarely Gene? agree. Gene, Gene Steratore. Steratore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, agreed, which is so. ingrained in my brain because Tony Romo. I don't know, Gene. Anyway, um, terrible, terrible call. I don't remember what we were talking about before we, we got confused or got lost talking about uh, the, the offensive that, line. Yeah, uh, they were they were fine in pass blocking. The run game, like I said, never got going. And, and you compare the vertical displacement of defensive linemen that the Chiefs achieved with their interior versus what the Bengals achieved. Uh, it left quite a bit to be desired. I mean, the running game is more of the same issue, really. It's guys taking turns messing up. Mm -hmm. And it's been that way for too long. Against these teams that are patient, that don't try to shoot gaps. The Bengals have a hard time running the ball. That was also true today. Then, you know, ears pinned back, Chris Jones going game record mode, four sacks in five plays. Pretty brutal way to end the game. It's going to leave a, a bad taste and image in some people's mouth. But like I said, I, I thought Jake Browning actually started pretty well in this game. And, yeah. and maybe we wrap up Let's the show with him. some some positives. Jamar Chase, a little bit, what he said after the game, which you might not have seen yet. But I have not seen it yet. Ooh, we'll get to that, too, coming up next. 
Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. So whether you want to wager on Bengals Browns next week, maybe you want to wager on one of these college football bowl games. Well, yeah, by the way, speaking of the playoff games, they're maybe happening right now as you're watching or listening to us. Happy New Year, by the way. So don't delay. Get to FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Great reminder, James. This is a, depending on when you're listening to this, might be New Year's Eve. If you're listening before you go celebrate the new year, Happy New Year. Stay safe if you're listening after the new year and it's January 1st. Welcome to the first episode of 2024. Hope you had a nice night. Wanted to hit on a couple of positives here. We, we've really harped on the negatives. We really started the show on a, on a down note. And it's something that we're going to talk about quite a bit. So if you think that we're being too nice to him or whatever, we're, we're going to talk about the deficiencies this team has to address. And there will be plenty of time to do that in the offseason. And it'll be an interesting exercise to kind of rank the, the different problems the Bengals need to, to tackle this offseason and think about the ways that they're going to do that. It's, it's such an interesting offseason. But before that, Jake Browning started this game on an absolute heater. Essentially couldn't make mistakes. I mean, even one of his early incompletions that, that failed on a third down was off Tanner Hudson's hands. Should have been a catch. Maybe that was, no, that was in the first half, right? Yeah. Anyway, first half. Yeah. First half. When you go field goal, touchdown, short field, touchdown to start the game against a really, really good defense, making Steve Spagnuolo pay for sitting in man, winning with your legs, extending plays, making plays both running and with your arm using that extension of plays, playmaking, playing within structure, finding those checkdowns when they're there. Was really impressed with the way Jake Browning started this game. Disappointed by the way the entire team finished and, and didn't react and adjust to the adjustments, but it was a pretty cool start against a, like I said, very, very good defense. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And that's that's what gave them a shot. That's what kept them in the game. And, and they needed that kind of start because there, there was one point, the strip sack, Bengals recover, and it felt like the air had been let out of Arrowhead. Yeah. And that's exactly... What I discussed, oh, like get off to that kind of start where your defense gets a stop and they gave up the touchdown, but then they give up the, or they force the stop with the turnover. And then the Bengals cash in and it's like, all right, pressure's on the Chiefs. And the Chiefs responded slowly, but it was there. And Browning deserves credit for putting them in that position. I, I, I agree. I think he played well. I, th I thought he had some great throws. The throw to T. Higgins, by the way, in the second half yes, was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was a great throw. And it should have been a touchdown. It was a great penalty. It, it, way to grab T. You got to do that. You don't want to give up the touchdown. I also thought... Um, There's a whole shot to Jamar. That was also really impressive. The, the Oh, the 24-yarder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I think... And that was a third down play. Third and mm -hmm. eight, I believe. Incredible and throw. Really tough. To find him. It's like, oh, is this, is this how it's going to be? By the way, Jamar Chase's trash talk. I get it. He only finished with 38 yards. Um, didn't have the game that anyone would expect him to have in, in that type of position. Didn't have a ton of opportunities either. Even some of those targets, the seven targets, not many of them were like, oh, he should have caught that. And Sneed made a nice play on one of them. But mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I thought it worked. He draws the pass interference in the end zone. The, the Chiefs are clearly fired up and, and getting frustrated. They had the little spat on the sideline with Willie Gay and Chris Jones that they showed on the broadcast. It worked, but you just didn't have enough. Mm -hmm. Like if Burrow's your quarterback, and I'm not trying to be mean to Jake, but if that happens, then you probably have enough for a knockout blow or, or another haymaker after that 17-point start. And they just they didn't have that for a bunch of reasons, not just Jake, but for a bunch of reasons, including both of their top weapons not, have, not being 100%. Anyways, I'm Ben Baby is in uh, Kansas City, and uh, I, I, I haven't listened to this because we were recording, but... He said, Jamar Chase on his beef with the Jarius Sneed, quote, mf -er won't fight me. <laughs> I haven't listened to it yet because we are on the podcast. Uh, but clearly there is beef 
and, and the other takeaway here is is this rivalry is still it's still that rivalry and mm-hmm. and that is exciting because I thought coming into this year it was the NFL's best rivalry and maybe it still will be even though the Bengals are eliminated for the first time since 2020. They still play the Chiefs again next year. It's going to be three Ugh. straight rows, three three straight years, uh, going going to play the Chiefs in Arrowhead. G- Giha is that Giha Field at Arrowhead Stadium? Yeah, it's Arrowhead Stadium, so I just call it Arrowhead because yeah. I think it's silly. Like, I'm just trying to make fun of them a little bit. Yeah, it's G E H A. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the Bengals schedule, by the way, is set for next year. We'll talk about that as well. Coming up, yeah. Um, also want to credit real quick, want to credit T Higgins for getting back into the game. Yes. Um, absolutely shocked to see a player miss almost a full half of football with a soft tissue injury and, and then re-enter the game and then draw that pass interfer- interference penalty, running a, a full out go route on a hamstring that, I mean, hamstring pulls are one of the easiest injuries to aggravate as we know. And he was just out there doing it. So hopefully he's Okay. Uh, but but some credit for for him as well. For finishing on on positive notes, Mike Hilton was another one that stood out on defense for a few really big important tackles that that we could give him credit for for sure. But yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I'll say this: the safeties they fit, they led the team in tackles. Mike Hilton was third. Hilton was much better than either of them in this game. Although I think Dax actually did play, I believe, pretty well in this game. I thought Dax played pretty well. Uh, yeah, Battle took a rough angle on the Pacheco deep run. Um, had some issues in coverage, had some issues tackling for for Battle today. And I know you wanted to end on a positive. Mm-hmm. I thought Logan Wilson struggled a bit. <laughs> and fourth and one, and I know they forced the field goal anyways, but you had to give them points. Fourth and one, you could have gotten off the field. If Jermaine Pratt and Sam Hubbard are out there and it's just Patrick Mahomes, you cannot give that up. We're not talking about Dax Hill. We're not talking about uh, D- DJ Turner. We're not talking about one of these young members of the secondary that everyone wants to blame for everything always on this defense. We're talking about members of the front seven that you're supposed to trust, that you've paid, that you've extended. How in the hell does Patrick Mahomes get through there? I don't know. But he shakes Jermaine Pratt and runs over Sam Hubbard for the first down. Yeah. Can't happen. Don't know how it, out, it happened. Mahomes is pretty good. Those guys need to make the play. Got to uh, make the play. I mean, there, there's a, there, that's one of two instances in this game. You, you kind of excuse Dax there, but one of two instances in this game where Mahomes just kind of muscles his way. Three, actually. Three plays in this game where Mahomes is able to either throw it away when he's being sacked or, uh, in that wow. instance, pick up a first down. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dax coming down. on the blitz, and yeah, you got to get him down. I agree. Yeah, there, there's a couple there. Plenty of negatives that we could go into further Sorry, if we wanted just... to. No, it's okay. It's it's important notes. We're reacting to the game. It is what this episode is. And and there will be time to to get to those because there are some pretty significant problems, I think, for this team on both sides of the ball that need to be addressed. That at this point, we know who the team is. They give up explosive plays, they have issues stopping the run consistently, especially when they go light in the box, especially now the DJ reader isn't there anymore. They have some issues running the ball on offense, and they have a quarterback who, when it's not Joe Burrow, is, is simply not quite good enough to, to win for you in drop back situations more often than not. We saw him do it against Minnesota. Haven't seen him be able to do it against some other teams here with tough defenses in the Steelers and the Chiefs. So, Too much to overcome, but real quick, Happy New yeah. Year. I love all of you, including you, Jake. Thanks, James. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Love you too, buddy. And all you listeners out there. You said happy it New back, Year. but he had to say buddy to look to, to, to like make it okay. Come on, man. What am what do I? You mean? That's just buddy. how we talk in Canada. Buddy. Yeah. People That's gonna do it. From Canada. People think you're from Canada, by the way. I mean, they, they've infected my vernacular. That's for sure. My lexicon. It has changed. That is going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. Happy New Year. We appreciate all of you who listen and have a good one.